Okay, on this video, I'm going to talk about black frame insertion and should you get the CX, the C1, the C2, which one is better? And should you care about 120 frames black frame insertion anyway? So the reason why I got this C2, this C1, LG C1, was because black frame insertion at 120 frames. So I'm already telling you what you should get based on my knowledge, based on my opinion, I'm telling you right away. Do you want to get the best motion resolution? Get the LG C1. Why? The LG C X has a better motion resolution performance. So you move the camera at 120 frames is going to be slightly better than the C1. But the problem it is a lot dimmer with black frame insertion than the C1. And based on my experience and all the struggles that I have to get 120 frames with black frame insertion working with the proper luminance level, I would strongly suggest you to get the C1 if you care about black frame insertion. I'm gonna, I mean, I'm gonna talk about, at the end, I'm gonna talk about should you care about that, okay? So now the C2, it is relevant in this black frame insertion uh, conversation because the C2 has a better 60 hertz black frame insertion than the C1 and the CX. The problem is for some reason they eliminated uh, the C2 uh, black frame insertion at 120 frames, okay? Also, I have to mention that you also have the option to use black frame insertion at 100 frames. And technically, I can create a custom resolution on the TV and get black frame insertion working at any frequency. That I haven't been able to achieve that yet. So just by creating a custom resolution on the NVIDIA control panel on a PC, that's not going to work. It takes more than that. But once I figure that out, I will do a video and explain you how to get that working if it's possible. But the bottom line is the most relevant black frame insertion setting you should care about is 60. Why? Most games, that's all you're going to be able to get, 60 frames. I have, and I'm going to show you the numbers here, I have basically the best uh, CPU out of the box right now for gaming is a 5800X3D with very fast RAM, 3600CL16 and I have a 3080GB. And it is not easy at all to get 120 frames per second on this game, this is Warzone, it is not easy at all. And this is not a great looking game. It is very difficult because it doesn't depend only on the GPU. It also requires the CPU to push uh, that frame. Especially you want, you see this graph here, this line, you want that line to be perfectly flat. So this, CPU, this GPU utilization it cannot be at 90% or 85% or something because it's going to drop. You, this can never drop, otherwise you get judder. You get the screen, it's jumping. It's jumpy like this when you move the camera. So if that ever happens, black frame insertion is not doing a better job than uh, G-Sync or other, and it looks ugly. So the reason why I bring that up is you should strongly consider how relevant is black frame insertion at 120 frames and that's why they eliminated that on the C2 because it's something that is very difficult to achieve anyway and you might think oh but the new GPUs are coming and I'm going to upgrade yes the new GPUs are coming but the new new games are coming too <laughs> and the new games are gonna be more demanding and it's still going to be a struggle to get 120 frames. This Unreal Engine 5, for example, is extremely demanding on CPU. 
you are not getting 120 frames with Unreal Engine 5, I can guarantee you that on any game. <laughs> Unless, unless they don't use any Unreal Engine 5 features and they just use basically an Unreal Engine 4 uh, you know, feature set. So the C2 has a better black frame insertion at 60 frames per second. Why? Because it has less flickering. That's another consideration that you should have with black frame insertion. At 60 frames on this LG C1, I can see flickering, especially when I have too much white on the screen. It's too, like most of the screen is white, I can see flickering. Like if I, if I stare at the sky and then, you know, most of the sky is the clouds are white, I, if I pay attention, I can see flickering. Okay, so our 120, no, 120 is perfection in movement. So if you are looking for perfection in movement, strongly suggest you the C1. Why? It's gonna give you this black frame insertion at 100 hertz, with, which is very important that you can also use it at 100 hertz, it works perfect. Actually, you would not be able to tell the difference between 100 hertz and 120 in terms of motion resolution, you might be able to tell the difference in input lag, but it's gonna be very, very tough <laughs> to notice that difference. So I would strongly re recommend you the C1 if you care about the best motion resolution. But also consider that the C2 has a much better black frame insertion at 60 frames it's not much better but it has less flicker and it, it works better and especially the c2 has a much much better this is big big difference it, ha it has a much 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 better motion interpolation so what motion interpolation is basically uh creating frames that doesn't that don't exist so if you're going to you're going to play a 30 frames uh, or 60 frames uh, game and you want the TV to create frames for you and give you 120 experience in terms of motion, the C2 is going to be a lot better, a lot. That d -jutter option on the C2 is a lot better because it has less soap opera effect, which is an artifact that appears when you use motion interpolation. Also for regular content, the C2 has a much, much better motion interpolation, again. So now I have to talk about latency because that's a question I get a lot. Hey, you know, this black frame insertion adds more latency. Uh, no, it doesn't at all. 120 frames black frame insertion feels like 120 frames no black frame insertion so here's the thing you can instead use nvidia ultra low latency with g-sync and the game is going to play at 117 frames per second with better input lag with a lower input lag so that's the consideration if you care about latency, that's a better option in terms of latency. But I can tell you, that's going to be, you're not going to be able to tell that difference. It's not going to be human, humanly uh, perceivable. You cannot tell that difference, I guarantee you. <laughs> so 120 frames, black frame insertion, we can say that is perfection. Perfection in movement, no blur, zero motion blur. Perfection in input lag, it feels as responsive, as humanly perceivable. But we also have to consider that to achieve that level of performance, you have, you need to have a very high-end CPU, not only the GPU. So, for example, somebody asked me the questions. I have a 2080 Ti and I have an 8700 
uh, K from Intel. That 8700K is not going to give you 120 frames in most games. It cannot do it. The 2080 uh, Ti, yes, it will give you that. Would I suggest you to upgrade if you care about 120 frames per second? Yes, the CPU needs to be upgraded. The GPU is fine, but the CPU needs to be upgraded. And would I take less uh, visual quality to achieve 120 frames? No, but I don't care about being competitive. So maybe you can try 100, and 100 is going to be perfect. And it's going to be a lot less demanding than 120. To achieve that, those last 20 frames <laughs> is not easy. So if you're playing something like Tekken 7, the person asked me, hey, I'm going to play Tekken 7. And I, that, that, that game, for example, is locked at 60 frames. The engine is not going beyond 60 hertz. And you need to download a mod to get 120. So what that tells me is that the performance, it might be unstable uh, and it might not be a rock solid, but maybe it will. And that doesn't look like a very demanding game. But on that game specifically, I don't see the need for black frame insertion because I was looking at the game, I was watching uh, some videos of the game and the characters are huge on the screen. They are barely moving from one side to the other. So black frame insertion in that case is going to be kind of pointless. The best way to use to play that game using these LG OLEDs is going to be 60, getting a lock 60 and using boost mode. So use boost mode, you come here to the settings, all settings, and you cannot have uh, of course, you cannot have black uh, black frame insertion, otherwise that's not going to work. So you go to Game Optimizer instead of uh, all settings. And here on Game Optimizer mode, you see here, Prevent Input Delay is on standard, locked when you're using black frame insertion. You would need to turn that off and then use Boost mode here. At 60 frames, Boost mode is going to give you very close input uh, latency as uh, 120 okay so that would be the best way to play that game anyway because trying to achieve 120 it might not be stable and black frame insertion is going to dim the screen and you're probably not going to appreciate that motion resolution if you don't see images moving from one side to the other of the screen okay so Conclusion, if you want the best motion resolution out of these LG OLEDs, and I'm not talking about the G series, you can get a G1, that's a better version of this uh, C1, and also has the same features. But if you care about motion resolution, in my opinion, C1 or G1 are going to be the best options. Why? 120 frames black frame insertion with better visibility than the CX. The CX is better in movement. It does have a higher motion resolution, but it is dimmer. And the problem with black frame insertion, the problem to get that working is to get enough visibility. So you see how good of you, know, you see how good is the visibility on this game? And I have black frame insertion on high. To get this result, the only option was to use HLG, HGI, HLG HDR with dynamic tone mapping on and then use that black frame insertion on high. That's the only way to get this result, period. So I am not very confident that the CX is going to work as well in terms of the brightness you can achieve on the on this game for example yes i am confident you will be able to see everything but i'm not sure about something that's very dark i'm not sure i would need to test that but if i'm going to bet i'm going to bet and give you my recommendation 
and that's the C1 because that is what I have and I know for sure it's going to be a sound recommendation. So just to summarize, if you care about black frame insertion, get the C1, but consider the C2 because it's superior on everything else. It is superior in more motion interpolation, which is a very, very big deal to me, especially to watch content. That's very, very important. That D jotter setting, for me, that's the future. Okay? So getting TVs that have better and better motion uh, interpolation, that's the future to me. You know, I, I, can perf I can imagine a future where you don't need to push more than 30 frames on, a, on any game and the TV is going to be able to give you low latency and, and give you 120 frames on the game. And basically you don't need to even have a very high-end computer to achieve that. Or maybe you do have... You do need that high-end computer, but then you're going to get spectacular graphic uh, fidelity and you get only 30 frames and then the TV is doing magic and giving you 120. That's the future to me. So the C2 on that is a lot better than the C1. So consider that. And also consider how relevant is 120 frames black frame insertion in terms of what it takes to achieve that level of performance it's not easy it's not easy at all so I've been showing the numbers you see sometimes there are some drops but that's okay it's, it's working but not easy and as a summary there is no added input lag with black frame insertion the same 60 frames black frame insertion and no black frame insertion is the same input lag the difference if you don't use black frame insertion you can use boost mode and get a better input lag and the same at 120 or even at 60 you can use something like Nvidia ultra low latency with G-Sync and get a better input lag than with black frame insertion but that doesn't mean that black frame insertion is adding lag it's only it does it only means that you could be using another feature that is better in input lag okay so and the other thing I wanted to make clear is that black frame insertion is more complicated than what I can explain on this video. Not that I know exactly how it works, but I can tell you that it is not uh, that you know you have 60 frames and then it's 120 frames and then one flame is black and then the, the rest is information. No, that's not the way it works. It's not that you have 120 frames and the TV, it has 120 more frames that are black. That's not the way it works. It's a lot more complicated than that. But at the end, it doesn't matter how it works because we are not engineers. We're not <laughs> creating TVs. So it doesn't matter. So yeah, those are my thoughts. My recommendation for motion. If you care about motion, C1, black frame insertion, it's perfection is I would select that instead of the CX because of the brightness it's lower on the CX with black frame insertion uh, but I don't know how good of a result you can get on the CX with with all the tweakings and the things that I've been uh, talking about maybe the result on the CX is gonna be spectacular and even better and it does have a better motion resolution than the C1 and I knew that from the get-go, but I decided to go with the C1 because of a higher brightness. And it is considerably higher brightness with black frame insertion. Okay? So, there you go.